Welcome to episode 177 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. I'm your host, Dave Ginsberg. My co-host, Warren Starr, is off this week, but I have returning guests. Always happy to have her. Kelly Gomont. How are you doing, Kelly? I'm well, David. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. We're uh, n- another fun week of uh, stuff to talk about with Apple, and, uh, and uh, I just came off of a birthday yesterday, so I'm a little... Uh, High on that, but now I'm low. No, I'm not. Keep <laughs> <laughs> a cake hangover. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, a little cake, you know, a little steak, <laughs> you know, some good, some good dinner. So, but, uh, but yeah. uh, we got the plenty to talk about this week. Uh, some news of the week. Uh, beta keeps keeps going. Um, I'm going to mm-hmm. talk about this new service. You'll find out here in just a bit. And tips. A lot, a good amount of tips here this week. So we should have a good, good, lively discussion with Kelly this week. Um. Let's go ahead and start it off. And first story here is uh, on Mac Rumors: Apple drops device trade-in prices in the U.S. That's sad. Mm-hmm. App- Apple today updated the iPhone trade-in site, dropping the maximum trade-in prices of almost all of its trade-in options. Trading in the 12 Pro Max, for example, will now net you seven hundred dollars, which is ninety bucks less than it was uh, mm-hmm. a couple days ago after this was uh, recorded. Um, so. Uh, you know, it is it is a great program, and I and I've done it in the past where it, it's uh, if you just do a simple trade in and then you get some money down towards an, a new iPhone. Um, so yeah, the price has gone way down. I mean, I look at my 10R. I, I was I, it was down from two hundred down to two hundred dollars from two thirty, and then I have a 10S Max I could trade in, and it's down from three twenty to two eighty. So I guess you kind of have to expect it. So uh, if you really wanted to spend the time, what do you think, Kelly? You probably eBay route, maybe Facebook Marketplace, uh, some of those trade-in sites might uh, score you a little more money. And I, yeah, I mean, they always did. Like, you could always get more for... Uh, you. It, it works a lot like cars, right? Like, right. you can get some amount, some non-zero amount from the dealership as a trade-in toward the next one, but you're always going to do better if you sell it to someone directly. Like, that's... It, that's it's always been the case. One of the nice things about um, about the way Apple does it is that a we know that the stuff that they get is responsibly recycled. They publish reports on it every year and that sort of thing. Like it's a very obvious paper trail of like if if you turn your machine into them for additional life or whatever. They have certain programs where those machines get repurposed, and if it's just that old then at least you know for certain that they're going to disassemble it and do something responsible with the the subsequent individual parts. So I appreciate yep. that about it. Me too. Um, but uh, it always struck me more as a convenience sort of thing. So I think all this is going to do is just bump up the, uh, you know, the eBay market or the the Facebook marketplace price on some of these things is just because... Um, uh, like I think the price is going to go up a little bit any place, you know, because there's going to be right. uh, more demand for them, I think, because I don't think as many people are going to try to mend, which is which on the one hand is sort of a shame. But at the same time, like I never thought of Apple's trade in as being the convenient like it was always the convenient choice. It was never the economical one. Right. Like, they'll give me some toward my next thing. And that's great. Whatever. Made easy. You know? So, yeah. I mean, there was plenty of times I sold iPhones on, on eBay and, and uh, I think Craigslist. I've done it a couple of times on there, which mm-hmm. you know, always, can, always can be scary. Uh, and uh, yeah. I mean, I think I used the Gazelle at one point, too, but I think they're probably they're, I don't hear they don't hear too much about them lately. Uh, but uh, mm-hmm. there's plenty of other services out there. So if you want to get more money for your for your, your iPhone, you might want to consider that. But I tell yeah. you, it's the convenience factor is, is just pays itself off of, uh, in the long run because you know, your time is money, too. And yeah. that take, doing doing an eBay listing, trust me, as, as, as we all know, it takes a little bit of time and effort. <laughs> so um, It does, yeah. So, uh, and uh, next story here, this was also, this was actually on The Verge. Uh Apple backs off breaking Face ID after a DIY iPhone 13 screen replacements. Uh, there's going to be a software update on the way, but that won't require repair shops to transfer a microcontroller. 
you know, soon after the iPhone 13 launched, repair experts found a, that swapping out a, a swapping out a th- iPhone 13 screen would break fi- Face ID unless you also moved over a tiny control chip from the original screen. It's a complex process that made one of the most mo- most common types of repairs prohibitively dif- difficult for independent repair shops. And this has been such an ongoing ordeal for some so quite some time. Mm-hmm. Apple's been trying to push back on 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 repairs of 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 iPhones and in general. I mean, give me a break, guys. I mean, I did it on a 10s Max, and I just discovered today that uh, Face ID isn't working on that one too. So they must be doing it on not just the 13. Uh, and I'm hoping the software update happens for that one. But uh, pretty frustrating. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I, I wish Apple would just get out of this game because I feel like there has to be a middle ground between like this is a screen that can be reliably repaired by somebody who is not Apple and yeah. yet still be a completely functional device, et cetera, et cetera. Like there has to be a way around this, I feel like. And so I really wish that this is one of those, like I, I just sort of wish Apple would, would stop bothering with this uh, because it's, I don't think it does anybody any good. And basically all it ever does is make Apple look bad because, True because this is the same sort of thing as we slowed your phone down instead of making the battery last for an hour and a half. And people were mad about that. And even when you explained it to them, they were still mad about it. And I feel like the, the, the right to repair stuff is just going the same direction. Like it doesn't, there's, there's no, however they spin it, it never looks good for them because they still have to say out loud, like, it's better for us if you never take it to anyone but an Apple store and pay our prices for the right. things that we c- that could be fixed by the kiosk in the mall outside the Apple store, not yeah. having to bring it all the way in here. Yeah. And and I w- so I, I just wish they would ease up on it and be like, fine, screen repair is a thing. And if you bring it to us with water damage, it's still not going to be covered. But, you know, like, you know, find a better place to draw that line, I feel like. Yeah, is- I agree really where that needs to go oh price too is what influenced me with the 10s max i wanted to kind of have it as a spare um that my sister-in-law trade gave uh gave me and then she she bought my 12 pro max because so and that 10s max actually used to be mine <laughs> until she bought that one uh but uh the pricing it was 176 dollars for a 10s max through a third party it was 329 dollars through apple so yeah, that's quite a difference in price you know when you want to save a little extra money on, on an iphone they want it to work I and mean, it's kind of unfair if you ask me yeah and and especially because it never seems like i don't know like it never seems like a good look and it never seems like a thing that is unreasonable yeah for them to be able to repair you know what i mean like i i've never liked any of the the right to repair scuffles because because the company never looks good mm. in that case you know no. ever and whoever it is if google was doing this i would say the same thing um i you know i like i don't understand like i want i understand the place where they're coming from where like you know we have to own it and worksmanship and repair and stuff like that so have an actual repair program just like you do for your other hardware, right? Like there's Apple authorized places. I could take my computer if it was having some sort of issue. And that place, while not an Apple store, would still be well within all of their rights and everything to resolve the issue that I'm having. If it's a right. hardware problem, they can work on it. All of that can be right, you know, and, and, and everything would be fine. And they could just do that for phones as well. Make make an an authorized repair program, make people get certified for it, make people go through the the rigmarole of making sure that they're maintaining whatever the standard is that Apple wants to maintain, but give people an avenue because not everybody lives in a place with an Apple store. This is true. This is definitely true. So let's hope this fixes it. And the the, the article said it's the the Apple, Apple has not said yet when that going is going to be released in software to to allow it uh, to work. So, see what happens that is for sure um next story here this was uh in in your place this is some website called the mac observer oh yeah that's it uh mm, new, new yeah uh, <laughs> new, new apple business essentials brings device management for small businesses here written by our friend mm-hmm. andrew or here then you guys talked about this on daily observations i know um uh, on uh, wednesday uh, 
Apple announced that was this week as we record this uh, Apple Business Essentials, a subscription service for small businesses that'll cover uh, device management, 24 7 Apple support, and iCloud storage plans. Uh, this is a there's a free beta starting today. You can sign up, but it's going to be full service mm-hmm. coming up next year in spring of 2022. Um, and the plans start from uh, you get uh, up to three devices and two terabytes of, of secure storage in iCloud starting uh, two ninety nine a month, uh, I believe, for up to three devices. Uh, mm-hmm. They bought, uh, what was the name of the company that they bought? Uh, you got, Fleetsmith. <laughs> Fleetsmith, which I know I remember yeah. meeting them at a MacTech uh, conference one year when I attended it. Um, <laughs> yep. Uh, the, the, and... Yeah, I did they, too. I have a hoodie from them. They were really, they were really friendly I think, guys. I, I think love I have a bag. Platform. I think I have a, a bag they gave me. Even I'll put all the stuff in. Uh, but yeah, kind of explain this, uh, 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 Kelly. What do you think of this? Uh, mostly, I'm glad that it's. Um, I appreciate it on a bunch of levels. Number one, this is something that um, I feel Apple has been working toward for a while, and buying Fleet Smith was one piece of that. Um, Part of my day job, like yours, is uh, IT and managing machines at scale. And so um, I use a number of different MDM platforms or uh, mobile device management is is what that usually uh, entails. And so like if you hear about Jamf, uh, that's a thing that that's one of these platforms. Um, There's bunches of them out there. And uh, I've used a bunch of them and, and... Part of the problem sort of with with all of them is that you kind of need someone whose whole job it is to kind of manage the devices and learn that platform and and be like an expert in that. And one of the nice things about the Apple one is I don't think it's going to require that level of knowledge and that level of specificity in knowledge from somebody. So if, you know, because there's a huge gap between it makes sense for us to license and pay for an MDM for all the people and all of the devices that we have in our organization. And, you know, like getting to that point where you have somebody whose whole job it is to sort of manage all the mobile stuff, like there's a huge gap between that point and we have enough stuff that we need to address the situation with with the number of computers, the number of phones, the number of tablets, the number of watches, you know, that are running around on our network. And we need to be able to get a handle on that. We need to be able to you know, get uh, a view of what operating system everybody has. Are they up to date? You know, because like there's insurance policies and stuff too that that right. go into things now where cybersecurity is like another way that people have to insure their organizations. And so um, like if you're paying for business insurance, you're probably also paying for uh, you know, cybersecurity insurance and you have to ensure that like backups are happening and that operating systems are kept current and all these sorts of things. And you have to have device management in order to get your hands around, like how many machines are we talking about? How many phones is this? Um, what operating system are they on? What shape are they in? Like, depending on what sort of monitoring you're using, you can find out if a, a hard drive is failing on somebody's computer and things like that. So it's nice to have, that sort of visibility into a system. And it's nice to also not have to spend a bunch of your time learning that. So, you know, Jimmy in accounting is the person you talk to because he's the only one that spent the time to learn the software so that we can manage all the phones or whatever. Like, instead, like there's, if you are a com- at a company that's in one of those gaps, you know, or doesn't have device management at all. And, you know, a year and a half ago, everybody picked up all the stuff on their desk and went home and (laughs) you have to manage all of that now that it's in everybody's house and not just in one building where you can walk around and scan asset tags or whatever. Um, The device management piece of this is really exciting to me for that reason, because I'm hoping that it will make it a lot easier for a lot of people to just do better when it comes to device management and, and being able to manage your fleet a little bit more effectively and see wow, I didn't realize because this person's really quiet and never speaks up. Like that's a six year old machine and we should really get you on something newer, Exactly. you know, or whatever. Um, you know, like being able to also be able to take proactive decisions and look at some of that stuff and get your hands around it a lot more easily. Um, like I'm a huge proponent of anything that you can automate that makes stuff like that easier, you know? And so I'm, I'm looking forward to this rolling out. I'm looking forward to, um, finding out more about it, finding out um, how it's going to work, how you get people into it and all that kind of stuff. Um, I will definitely be digging into this further. I did sign up for the beta 
uh, as part of my yeah. day job so that we can uh, poke they, at it a little bit and see what's what. They kind of do it as well. Just check it out. Um, yeah. No, this so for small I'm, business. This is great because, you know, a service like Jamf was more more designed for the, the, the enterprise, a, la- a larger company, uh, which, which, which and, we both utilize. But it's yeah. uh, this is going to be more of a you know, uh, aim at a smaller business that doesn't want to get yeah. that high of that high scale of, of manageability. Well, and a lot of them like the, there's a barrier of entry, right? Like no matter what you have to pay for 30 seats or 40 seats right. or 50 seats, you know, like there's a number. And if you've got 25 people in your organization, everybody's got a laptop and a phone, that's 50 devices right there, you know, yep. but the, one of the things I like about Apple's pricing structure is that it's per person. So if all anyone gets from work is a laptop, then you can be on the less expensive plan. Cause everybody only has one device. If you've got an additional device coming, then uh, you know you can put people on the slightly more expensive plan. Everybody gets three devices, so the pricing of it is per person, right. which I also think is sort of I, I like I appreciate that to a certain extent, and I'm really looking forward to finding out um, how the mechanics of the management work with what they're doing. Like if you need to install a profile for somebody, that's bring your own device, you know, and like what kind of stuff can you do with that, and the sorts of things that we've seen with declarative management that came to Monterey and a bunch of those other things. Um, a lot of this, this is some of the steps that we've seen up to now that didn't sort of make any sense. Like Apple was really excited about this thing when they talked to us about the new version of Mac OS at dub this year, whether it was this year or last year or year before. Right. And then that thing rolls out and you're like, okay, but what does this do for me? Like as a user, well, right now, you know, it doesn't really do anything that you've got an entirely new file system or that, uh, everything is now containerized. And so the system drive is very different from the user data drive. And there's a reason for that. And, you know, and then this thing happened and then this thing happened. And, you know, now you can stand here and look back at all of that and go, oh, well now all of this makes more sense because like we've got the new erase all content and settings, right? you know, in Monterey. And so like you can turn a machine into a fresh out of the box looking computer in more time in less time than it's taking me to describe to you that there is now a method in Monterey where you can go in and go like basically erase all content and settings and you let it reboot a couple of times. And now it's basically like you just took it out of the box and you can hand it to somebody. And like I said, it takes less time to actually do that thing than it does for me to describe to you what just happened and watching that happen. Like I saw a live demo of it, which was, was really interesting to watch somebody, you know, uh, right. obliterate a machine and turn it into a brand new computer for the next user and watching those sorts of things happen like makes all of those other pieces now make sense you know at the time like why do i need a new file system like what's wrong with yeah. hfs or hfs plus you know and so like some of the things that apple was really excited about like now i know why they were excited about it and so yeah. um the other notable thing about this i think is that this is one of the few times that apple bought something and then we see like a straight line between the thing they bought and then the thing that they're doing yeah. now usually they just bury because it doesn't happen very often yeah <laughs> like you don't even know about it anymore eight layers deep in the menus there's a new feature and it's because apple bought this company like two years ago you know um it's it's sometimes it's obvious like apple bought dark sky i it's wonder what that means for yeah, apple right what's gonna happen, what's like, gonna happen to dark sky weather weather got better and we could see like there's a straight line right there and this is the same thing um fleet smith was was a solid product the folks behind it were really smart they were very on top of things uh i was using device management to manage um app camp computers and ipods and ipads and it was so many things and i was super overwhelmed yeah and when it's just me um you know it was it was really hard and that was you know that ended up being like 85 devices by the time we were done um, it was so many things. And then being able to go through and look at the list and go, what needs an OS update? What is on the latest version? Uh, did I push the Wi-Fi password out to all of these easily? And those are the kind of things you can do with device management. So yep. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, where this ends up with Apple. And I personally can't wait to get my hands on it because if it turns into something super useful, then... Um, this is going to be another one of those moments where like Apple is coming into a market that exists and that is very well developed and they're going to have to compete. So like, why should I use Apple's solution over 
Jamf or Simple MDM or Mosul or anything else that's out there that would allow me to do the yep. same sorts of things. So um, watching Apple compete is always my favorite thing to watch because a lot mm. of times Apple comes out and goes, you know what would be awesome if we made this speaker and you could talk to it, but it's an awesome speaker and you just talk to it like that, you know, like when Apple comes up with stuff like that, like it's kind of fun to watch. But the best thing to watch is like Windows just came out with like five killer operate killer OS things in the new version of Windows. Like, like what's Apple going to do about that? Android has this awesome thing that we don't have on iOS. Like, how are they going to sort that out? So yeah. whenever Apple is forced to compete, that's the Apple I really like to watch. And gotcha. so watching them compete particularly in an arena where they do not have a good reputation. Um, I'm very much looking forward to seeing how they're going to um, proceed we will uh, see. in this marketplace with a bunch of competition. That's pretty solid competition, honestly. It is. <laughs> like, it's a pretty mature uh, field of technology device management. So there's a lot, there's a lot out there that is very, very, very capable and yeah, it's expensive. Uh, but so I'm curious um, where Let's Apple's going to fall. You know, where they fall in that. Absolutely. All right. Next story. Um, Apple must allow external payment options by December 9th of 2021. It's also on the Mac Observer from our friend Jeff Butts. Uh, Apple mm -hmm. request for a stay on, in a September 11th, a September 10th court order uh, requiring it to allow external payment options in, in apps has been denied. That's the Epic versus Apple judgment uh, mm -hmm. that was given to them. And of course, Apple's reluctance to allow the external payments in the App Store uh, claims it would take a considerable amount of time, Apple says, to, to prepare prepared to comply for the court's order and hearing this this week uh, apple claims it needs time to rewrite its anti-steering policy before it begins to allow external payment options cupertino also insists that it needs to evaluate safety and security measures to allow external payment links so they're, they're so they're arguing about the the complexity of it and and Needing the extra time. Okay, uh, let's see where that goes. So if the if the judge is for fight, fighting this, you know, Epic may have won this part of their their lawsuit allowing for external payments. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm kind of interested to see where this goes, and I'm also kind of not interested. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of I mean, we've kind of we've kind of ignored all the Epic versus Apple nonsense mm -hmm. for the last. Uh, last few 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 months let go and uh yeah all mm -hmm. of a sudden they, they have this little court order here that they have to now comply with payments <laughs> yeah and like on the one hand yes epic had valid points but on the other hand like i just feel like they've kind of been jerks about it the whole way along and i feel like they will be equally sore as winners as they would be if they are losers, regardless of how this ultimately comes out. Like Epic is going to come out and bellyache about it mm -hmm. no matter what. And sure. that's part of what I don't like about, <laughs> about this whole thing <laughs> is that like, as, like they basically dared Apple to yank them from the app store and then Apple did it. So immediately they had like their little PR campaign with the 1984 parody video and all the stuff, you know, that they did. Um, oh, poor us. Oh, look how put upon <laughs> we are, you know, and somebody described it as um, basically like if you're seeing a bunch of stuff about Epic versus Apple, all you need to know is that the billion dollar company is suing the trillion dollar company because they don't think they made enough money. And I'm like, yeah. Oh wow, that is exactly what that means. that's exactly what that case is all about, isn't it? So, yeah, like that on the one hand, yes, their points are valid and yes, if like I understand what it is that they are trying to get to, but I also feel like they're being complete jerks about it and so i'm kind of rooting against them anyway for that reason so like i i think it's valid i think and i i think it's going to be interesting to see where uh anyone weighs in on this primarily because uh google play is sort of doing the same thing as far as we take a percentage if you officially list it in our app store and so if apple has to suddenly take other payments i feel like google's gonna have to as well 
they're not going to get to be their own payment system anymore. And I, I definitely want to see how that turns out for everybody. That's part of the reason it's kind of interesting to watch this is because maybe Apple is the, the first is the canary in the coal mine, but like, they're not the only one that this is going to affect. So I definitely want to know how it shakes out. Yeah. We'll see what happens for sure. It's going to be interesting. Um, Last story here through Mac Rumors, uh, Apple Store app for iOS, of course, uh, adds a saved items list for easy sharing with your product specialists. The Apple Store app for iOS was updated today as we record this uh, with a new feature that lets you easily save items to lists, share them with a specialist online or during a store visit, and then get a recap of your visit to help you later purchase your items. After you save your items to a list, they can be found in a new saved item section on the account page accessible via your profile picture at the top right of the app interface. And once you've met with a specialist about a list, you'll be able to see your see notes and suggestions on on it through a new sessions recap session. So section. Uh, so uh, this, it also brings uh, audio descriptions to product videos to let you hear details about products if you're unable to watch the videos on your screen. So that that was updated in the app store. I think it's about time because it always was hard to put. Some people want to be able to put a little list together of some things you want to buy at the Apple store and uh, you never could do this. Yeah. Um, Honestly, like while this sounds nifty, I really want it to come back to the app store because there used to be like wish listed or save it for later or whatever it was called. And we don't have that anymore. And that bums me out because I'm really good at I like I my camera roll is littered with screenshots of apps that I want to recommend to somebody or that I want to check out later or whatever. Um, It's one of the many, like, even if I narrowed it down, like what are the three things like, you know, you can wave a wand and make the app store work the way you want it. What are the three things you change? Like, this is still one of those three things. I really like having that wish list for being able to check things out later. I like it a lot. And I've been sad forever that it's gone because it's been gone forever. I really liked it. I thought it was, I thought it was nice to be able to do that and have the opportunity to check things out later. So absolutely. Now I'm just thinking what the other things on my list would be. If I could get three, what would be the other two? Going to get some stuff here. What do we want? All right. That's the news this week. Let's move on to topics. Uh, Beta. We always talk about beta this week. uh, iOS 15.2 beta two was released. Uh, Mm -hmm. And it's just, uh, that was uh, the release to developers and public beta testers uh, added actually quite a few new features, um, in, which includes things like uh, legacy contacts. Uh, with cloud legacy contacts, you can set a trusted person uh, to be able mm-hmm. to access your Apple ID and your data or digital legacy after you die. Uh, the person that's designated as your contact can uh, access your photos, messages, notes, files, contacts, everything basically uh, in your your accounts and it. it uh, keychain passwords will remain inaccessible as as does licensed media, but at least the, the legacy stuff will be there, which is a good option to have that in place. Yeah. Good comment. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad that they're finally doing this. Um, yeah. It's taken long enough. It should have been in a single digit number of iOS, to be honest. But um, you know, it happened eventually. So, but now that it's out, or at least you know, um, it's in the wild, even though it's not out for everybody yet. Um, this definitely feels like one of those features that uh, now that we've got it, you know, like where has this been all my life? Like, I yeah. really, so I'm hoping, I'm hopeful that it, that it makes things a lot better um, when yeah. people end up in a situation where you have to access someone else's Apple ID and, you know, and, and it's, it's kind of a mess. So uh, I'm looking forward to the changes uh, mostly because I'm, I'm, I'm glad that they're, they're finally doing it and that uh, hide my email was also getting, I think beefed up in the next beta. Yep. Um, that's We're another about thing that I'm looking forward to. So. Yeah. And then uh, Find My Lost Item Scanning, which is in the Find My App. Apple added a, a new option for uh, items that can track me. Uh, tap on this allows uh, users to search for nearby items that might be used to track their location. Uh, uh, when activ- activated, the unknown items, uh, uh, can you can scan for anything that's nearby and uh, will let users know either way if there's a device that belongs to someone else nearby. So that, uh, there's also a help return lost items option also scans for nearby devices that might be lost. Uh, so it's kind of like tracking for stuff and b- being able to find some uh, uh, where this item belongs uh, to. So that 
should be interesting. <laughs> now I understand why Tyle took them to court. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's, there you go. That's what, uh, like that. Now I get it. Yeah. And then uh, the iPad OS TV app, uh, they've introduced a new design. As in features includes a sidebar, which makes navigation easier. I always found that to be a pain Ooh. to navigate in the, the iPad. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a dedicated store tab in the TV app for accessing movies and TV shows that can be purchased. Uh, the new design and then the addition of a store might, might and may help separate Apple TV Plus content from paid content, which always was confusing to try to find. Um, so yeah. good, good they did that. Um, you have a always on dark mode for CarPlay Maps app. Uh, I can't wait to try that in my car. Uh, yeah. You can put CarPlay in, in dark mode. And then we just, as you just mentioned, the hide my email uh, is going to be in the mail app itself. You can use the hide my email uh, uh, direct directly from the mail app after installing the 15.2 beta. Uh, when composing an email, you just tap from field and select your hide my email option to generate a random nice. email address, which is sweet. So now you can, do it, even yeah. though you'll get it, it's just going to be random. So they can really only can send it to that email and then you can get rid of that email once you start getting too much spam. <laughs> yep. Um, I really it, like hide my email. I'm really glad that it's finally a thing that's happening. Oh, and here's the mention too: display repair restriction changes. So maybe 15.2 uh, is going to fix it, as the Verge mentioned. We talked about in the news earlier here uh, that will change an iPhone 13 policy. What's iPhone 13? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go put beta on this on this X Tennis Max. I hadn't done <laughs> I hadn't done it yet, so, uh, so let's check see if that fixes that. Um, so yeah, I'm glad they fixed that. So we already know what that. Is. So it looks like 15.2 is going to fix that. Uh, then communication safety, uh, Apple's enabling communication safety in messages for, for children. Oh, right. so yeah. This was, oh, I remember this was, yeah, it was a big hoo-ha when all the privacy concerns mm -hmm. about this, uh, CSAM, uh, uh, which still has, I guess they're saying it's still in, it's functional, but it's still in development. So it's going to help with, you know, this photo is sensitive, you want to view it and you know, that that's good. Then of course bugs. We always know this is going to fix some bug. Oh yeah, and, and they don't really never tell you what it is. Uh, so that's coming. Watch OS eight point three beta is out, uh, and then uh, TV OS uh, of course fifteen dot two is out as well. And neither one have anything really notable that I'm. It, it never really does, <laughs> actually. So, yeah. um, and so that's good news. That's good news. So. Uh, you you have what do you have, you're running one of your devices on beta? Uh, I am not at the moment. Yeah. Um, okay, but uh, it, it's been sort of nice that the the betas have continued a pace. Like as soon as fifteen or as soon as twelve oh one dropped, like there was a beta for Monterey. You know, like the next day, mm -hmm. and as soon as we got fifteen, like we're on you know the second big beta cycle of like new features that are coming to ios 15 so i'm just glad to see that um the the beta program seems to be going along um pretty smoothly seems like it for the most part um you know june and july are never good months to be installing betas anyway <laughs> True. so like now that we're later in the cycle for these um they definitely it definitely feels like um we're getting sort of normal normal betas like the a lot of the bolt tightening has already happened and uh, we're getting to the point where it's going to be something you can install on older devices because some of the optimization, like for battery and speed and stuff, that comes on you know installing stuff on older hardware. We're getting to that point where that stuff is gonna is gonna start dropping in silently, and you'll just notice on your older machine like stuff is running a lot better than it did. So absolutely, yeah, absolutely. All right, so that's beta, and um, I have a story to tell this week. Um, it involves uh, some interesting things that happened to my Apple Watch. Um, so I was going along, and last week, all of a sudden, I just start to discover when I go to try to buy anything with my Apple Watch at a, at a at a terminal, it would say "Try again, try again." And I said, "Wait, well, hey, this must be something wrong with my credit card, you know?" So I swiped through the yeah. wallet, and I said, "Okay, let me try my Apple card. Try again, uh, my debit card. Try again." I thought it was it was my I was my debit cards because it was two debit cards that I had in my watch, and then plus the app my Apple card, and then I had like one like a Discover card on as well. Tried it all, yeah. every single one of them. It wouldn't work. I'm like, this is interesting. Hmm. Why would this be? I don't know why. So um, I got to a point where I, I contacted Apple support because I wanted to just kind of get a console and this should not be happening. I sure hope my Apple Watch isn't having a problem. Um, so turns out the simple fix was to unpair my watch and then 
pair it back again. Now, of course, we know that's a pain, but it actually has gotten a lot simpler um, than it has in the past when you've had to unpair yeah. your watch and then you're like, oh, God, now I'm going to have to set it up the way I want again and all that. But uh, they've done it. They've done a really good job of, of um, with the backup and, and, and being able to restore it very simple and easy. So as soon as I restored it, you know, and of course, it remembers all the cards I had. So it automatically adds them. Of course, you got to get the three digit codes for every card again to put them in to. Yep. To authentic cam, except for the Apple card, of course. Uh, and um, uh, so put them back in, and sure enough, I go back and I, I had to go try it because I was on the Apple <laughs> I was Apple support. I said, okay, well, how am I going to test this without going out to a store and buying something? Yeah. Like, well, I guess you're going to have to do that. Look, get back to me and let me know. So sure enough, I decided, you know, I'll go up the road and I'll go to CVS and just go buy some stuff. And so I did. And yep. sure, sure enough, it worked. So uh, so just be aware of that. If, if you ever get a weird bug like that happen to you uh, when it comes yeah. to Apple, Apple uh, the, the, the wallet app, um, that uh, you may have to restore your watch in order to get it to work again. So okay. very, very strange, very strange. So yeah, uh, that is weird. And uh, another another thing I wanted to talk about, um, I uh, I did an actual review of these folks uh, back on episode one thirty eight. I was with Mr. Michael Plant, uh, and uh, this is a this was a a service called uh, PodSwap, and uh, what they did. Yeah. Yeah, what they did was they you take you know I, I've got I still have them sitting right here in front of me here my my first generation AirPods Pro, AirPods uh, the mm -hmm. batteries the batteries were were not very good they would last if, yep. if I was lucky an hour and they had a service that, uh, that uh, you traded in uh, you sent in your AirPods not the case but the AirPods and they would send you back a new pair that had mm -hmm. new batteries and had new batteries in them so great service you know, sixty bucks go go back and listen yeah. to to that to that to, to that uh, review of that but. Hey, the, the, these gals, so it's uh, Emily and Emma, who are the co-founders of this company, have now mm -hmm. come up with a new company called uh, Phone Swap. And now what they're doing is they're going to easily allow you to swap your older iPhone for a new one. So I went onto the site, and actually I talked to somebody from um, uh, on their site uh, earlier today, earlier today, and I wanted to kind of ask what you do. So if you go, the link's in the show notes, so it's uh, thephoneswap.com. Um, so you can go in and, and so here I, here I did was I went in and tried, They I, I said my current phone is my is a 10s Max. And then they have, all they do is ask you a couple questions. Is, is it free of any uh, cracks, or any screen mm -hmm. cracks, or any that kind of stuff? And then, um, and it works and it's clean. You say, okay. And then, so now they gave you three options here. They have the simple swap, the smart swap, or the super swap. Right now, the smart swap is out of stock. So I had a feeling that's probably the iPhone 12 or the 12 Pro Max. Um, yeah. but so for a simple swap, if you wanted to swap, let's say to an iPhone 11, they have that. And, and they, the, this is 128 gig iPhone 11. It would, with the trade, it would cost you $175. Um, not bad for an iPhone 11. Um, and if you wanted to even go bigger, if you wanted to have a, uh, a 11 Pro Max, it would move it up to $325, um, which I don't think is as good of a deal because it's giving you only a 64 gig uh, sp space versus the 128 on the 11. So now that I look at that, that, that that's not such a good deal. But I like I like how their their, their business model is because it's very simple. You're just going to send, they're going to send, they send you a phone, you send the other one back. Um, and a real simple service. I thought uh, it's a it's an interesting way of uh, getting a new iPhone. And I think it, it all depends on the comp uh, how competitive they're going to be with their with their with their devices. They do tr yeah. trade in they do trade in the 11 Pro Max all the way down to the iPhone 7. So you can you can trade in the 7. I, I'd be curious. Let me all try right. to let me see what the price of the 7 is. You just say it's in good condition. Is it paid off? And it perfectly matched the swap. So. Yeah, so now you could trade in your iPhone 7 for an iPhone 10 for $250. And if you want to start trade in your iPhone 7 for a 10R, it's $250 as well. Or you can go $400 and get the iPhone 11. So kind of interesting. All right. So yeah. I, 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 I like these kind of services. and Because uh, I think even when you go to like a Gazelle or any of those other services that you, you can trade in your phone, um, they give you cash back for it. But this is like an yeah. instant way of getting a new model um, and, mm -hmm. and trading it in real simply. So, yeah. Just to uh, go back to that, um, uh, like we were talking about before with the um, uh, trade in at the Apple store, like right. just another way to make it a super convenient option 
to do something else with that device. So yeah, I like it. Absolutely. So check them, yeah. check them out. Uh, I, I highly recommend it. I, like I said, I had a great experience with the pods, pod swap, and I can't imagine you wouldn't have a good experience with the phone swap service as well. Their link is uh, the link to the, this is in the show notes. So check those things out. Uh, so, uh, I got a book for my, my birthday and I thought it was kind of a fun book and um, yeah, it is a book called Apple Design and I'm showing it on camera here if you can see it. Um, and, you know, if I remember correctly, Apple may, uh, actually had a book that was had show all of Johnny Ives designs and it was it was uh, pretty yeah. expensive. It was like a, a couple of hundred dollars if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it was not uh, cheap. Um, so this one here, actually, I looked it up and it's now the link I, I, I sent on, on the Amazon. It's about thirty two dollars, but still. Not too expensive, but uh, I think, uh, you know, it's got some really good quality. So there's, you know, I think the book on camera there, I think it's, uh, you know, really, really well laid out. Um, yeah. It just shows the design. I think I, I even found the, uh, there's the, iP- the iPad and the new, the, the original I- iMac. And it's got uh, the iPod Hi-Fi. Who can ever forget that? <laughs> um, uh, so, uh Neat little thing. I I, I recommend that uh, to take take a look at to see if um uh, uh to, just to have like a coffee table book and you know if you see the book here even has yeah. a little he, he has a notch in the hair too which I found to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was matching the notch for the iPhone, but um, but uh, check it out. It's, it, uh, I put a link in the show notes for that as well. So um, uh, interesting book. Um, so. Um, yeah. With that, let's go into some tips. Uh, First thing I had here was uh, how to install and manage apps for messages on iOS 15, iPad OS 15. And I don't do this very often. Have you done this before? Added added specific apps uh, to uh, uh, to messages? Sort of. Uh, mostly stickers uh, is what I've right. added uh, through messages. But Especially yes. the Ted Lasso stickers. Uh, yes, that was very <laughs> exciting. Uh, Ted Lasso stickers, Star Wars stickers, Golden Girls stickers, uh, all of those exist. Um, I have a cool app where you can draw your own and then export it in like sticker pack format so that stuff that you actually drew can be the stickers, yeah. which I think is very cool. Um, so, yeah, I, um, I haven't done a lot of it, but mostly because uh, there didn't used to be a ton of like interesting apps via messages. So there were a few things that were like a game that you could play with somebody, you know, right. like back and forth over messages like Boggle or something like that. You know, there were things like that, but not uh, not a lot of stuff like that that was really fun. So I haven't spent a ton of time with those. Yeah. So if you go, if you actually go into your, into a message, into the messages, and um, if you type the app store app that, that we shown below it, it, mm-hmm. it shows a bunch of different, uh, different games and stickers that are available right now. The fall and the, the stickers are available. Um, and they have uh, iMessage games that they love. And then there's a couple of different games there. Yahtzee with buddy devices, the, the buddies mm-hmm. dice should be what is interesting. Of course, in app purchase, um, stickers you love space jam and uh, like i said the ted lasso one's out there somewhere still i'm sure uh yeah. and uh celeb moji <laughs> that is interesting and they have another, <laughs> another one here says keep it weird <laughs> the banana ninja and banana samurai okay that look interesting um then they have. Then they show the top paid and top free. Um, I'm sorry, I tra- I'm still back at Banana Samurai. Yeah, but, yeah, like, yeah, I don't need, like now. I need to go. It's look ninety nine cents. Looks like. It is ninety nine cents. So, so you have to sacrifice that dollar to to get it. But uh, and then they have tap top paid very necessary emojis, <laughs> uh, and and that's ninety nine cents. And then uh, there's top free ones. This one was interesting. Polls for iMessage, where you actually can put a poll. Uh, in, in an iMessage, and if you wanted to ask something, I might have read. I think I looks like I've downloaded that before. I might try that again. Um, and uh, you just you just tap download it, and you can open it up, and it actually uh, allows you to create a, a poll and then send it right into messages, right? Which is kind of neat. I yeah. Didn't even know I'd forgot. It looks like I had downloaded it once before and forgot about that. So um, we'll check that out. So, but yeah, there's there's. All kinds of ways that, that you can go in and uh, download these messages. Um, 
And if you want to keep the app on your iPhone, but if you don't want it in your app drawer, you actually can go in in just a few steps here uh, to enable or disable apps in the Messages app. So if you go into Messages, start your Messages, opening an existing conversation in the app drawer, you can scroll to the right until you see Button, and then tap the button, then toggle on or off the apps that you want don't want to see. Because there might be some in there you may not be interested in, uh, but you can go in and do that. So, um, yeah. So yeah, there's all adds more powerful things to things that what iMessages can do. Um, uh, that is uh, for sure. So, um, and a couple things I wanted to talk about with uh, what was added to uh, uh, to I- iOS 15. Um, mm-hmm. First one was uh, copying copying links uh, from a tab group. I think Safari has gone has become very very powerful when it comes to that, and, and being able to uh, to copy those links is uh, is is very easy. Um, and uh, the way you do that is uh, you uh, open up the tabs group, uh, which is uh, down at the, at the at the as you tap, tap the tabs group here, and. Uh, you tap a group's name, or if you have the bottom of the screen, you can edit and create those tabs group in a card menu. It's got you tap all the circle ellipse next to the tabs group in the question, and then you copy links. But what that allows you to do is be able to copy the links, and then then if you want to paste them right into like let's say a notes uh, app, you could do that, um, which, which is really cool. So yeah, so you you tap the tabs button, you go to the two tabs, and uh, and uh, very easy to, to go through and uh, click it up and edit and, and tap edit. And then you can tap the ellipse and copy links and, and each of those tabs that are open. So if you, you're, you're one to open up uh, many tabs. And I just found out the other day that a family member had over 500 tabs open. I'm like, no, they didn't because you can't ask me how I know. I, I know. I remember, you know, but she <laughs> had she, she, 500. It goes. You got to close one. Yeah, so. oh, that's what I'm saying. She had 500 because she was at max. So, yeah. Uh, so, but she, but the, that is really cool because on the fly, if you're looking, if you're looking at, uh, if you're looking at the tabbed apps here, uh, it is uh, it, it it is a is a cool thing uh, to be able to to. to copy those because we we do that all the time uh, i know at least i do checking a yeah, lot of different websites too. and you want to yeah. copy and paste them real quickly into a note um you mm-hmm. can you easily can do that uh the uh other uh tip i wanted to talk about was uh being uh, being able to mute notifications for individual apps uh and uh that gives that gives you a, a really good option being able to mute specific apps uh that makes it really easy uh, to uh, keep it from bothering you really is what it is uh, yeah let me, let me let me get to my note here uh, and it uh, it is really a really simple way of being able just to mute the app uh, individual apps and the way you do this is uh, you, it's a, you simply swipe on a notification and then you that this this shows up in the notification center and then you tap options and then you can select mute for one hour on mute for today so if like if you keep getting notifications for a specific uh, item it's like I, I get twitter notifications all the time and maybe i'm i'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm i want i want to take a time out I, mean, I, I like to get those notifications because i always you're always knowing what's going on in the world but i i focus of course on technology not any of the other crazy things go on in the world uh you can uh, you can mute that for an hour or you can mute it for t- uh, one day um and it's a cool uh, simple way of being able to get uh to a menu uh so mm-hmm. so very cool very cool kind of things as well so uh the yeah. other the other thing i want to talk about was uh, the accessibility uh, and being able to change dark mode on a specific app now amazon is probably a, is probably the most common app that uh you can't change it to dark mode and at least they have they, they haven't uh, offered that option on the app just yet yeah. so so if you go into settings and you go into accessibility and then you scroll all the way down uh, to the bottom under general, there is a per app settings. So if you go into there, you can add an app. So in, in the case I added Amazon. So if you tap Amazon, so now you can change all of the settings specific to the app. Cause that was always what we, whenever we would use accessibility and of course, accessibility is, is, is good for someone who's, you know, who's, who's uh, uh, vision impaired or hearing impaired. Well, mm-hmm. in this case, you can go in and let's say you want to change display text sizes. You can go in and change bold. You can make bold text, larger text, buttons, shapes, uh, 
increase the contrast, reduce the transparency. Uh, so uh, what you do in this case is you go down to Smart Invert, and then you can turn that on or off or, or set it as default. So if you turn okay. it to, to on on that specific app, then you go into Amazon, you will now be able to uh, see Amazon is is in dark mode, which I, I kind of like. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so I, I thought that was a, a, a really cool, uh, a really cool feature. Um, so check that out. Um, another yeah, tip, that is cool. another tip, uh, which I'm sure most people know, but maybe not. If you're in Safari and you want a quick way to refresh a page, you just have to go at the top of the page and, 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 uh, swipe down. It'll automatically refresh the page because sometimes you might be at its site. Oh. If you can go through and just swipe down, it gives you the mm-hmm. option to really do a quick refresh of the page and uh, have that. So any, anything that's been standing out for you with iOS 15 as of late, uh, Kelly? Um, no, but only because um, uh, like a lot of the stuff that I tend to recommend is is not necessarily new. So um like uh, control center seems more responsive to me in, in mm-hmm. iOS 15 and that may be made up, um, I agree. but it seems a little perkier. And so I think it was last time I was on the show with you that I was trying to sort of plead the case for go spend a little time with control center and it will make your life better if you can turn control center into something that is use- actually useful and helpful to you and go go make some edits and put the right yep. things in there so that you've got what you need. Uh, you know, I put magnifier in there for my mom on control yeah, center and like it changed her life. Like she uses it constantly for things. So, I do too. Uh, and she didn't even know that was a thing her phone could do for her until I showed it to her. And uh, I think it, it's also partly just um, awareness. I would say um, like uh, finding out that uh, my stepdad, for example, um, he watches uh, football, but he watches with big over ear headphones on. Uh, so he doesn't hear if his phone goes off um, because his daughter is texting him to talk smack about the football game they're watching. <laughs> so he was missing all of her messages and missing the opportunity to trash talk. And so, um, like I pointed out to him at one point, uh, I know you set your phone there next to the, you know, on the table next to the chair where you're sitting. So you can have it flash so it'll catch your eye so that you don't miss a text message anymore. And like that was such a better thing for him. And so it's I think part of it is just being able to apply some of the uh, practical lessons when you get something practical like that, that you can kind of file away. Like there are lots of different applications for some of that stuff. So I would say everybody could probably benefit from a little bit of time in, in the accessibility preferences and benefit from, uh, you know, a little bit of time in control center and, and things like that as well. Um, like deliver quietly. There's just sort of things yeah. I end up rediscovering in new versions of the operating system. Like um, the most recent one that I rediscovered was that having a notification pop up for you could be the only time you ever see it because that's a separate line item in the preferences than show in notification center. So you can have stuff like show you. Uh, the garage door opened or whatever and not have it show up and have like an endlessly scrolling list of notifications later and finding out that some of those things that, you know, can be really transitory. You don't have to worry about, you know, having them at the bottom of your notification list all the time. So um, sometimes I just get reminded of stuff like that every so often. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I should really too. remind people of that. So I, it's, I it's, it's just one of those things that, um, you know, because... Like at this point, you know, it's been going on for so long and and we've had iOS for as long as we've had all those sorts of things. Like it sort of gets forgotten, I think, in some ways, Um, you know, so it's one of those things like I never know what what everyone else doesn't know, you know, and and that kind of thing is is always, you know, hey, well, remember. So there's always like stuff you have to, you know, sort of relearn when it comes to those sorts of things. So like I always have a tip for somebody because I just had a conversation with somebody else about, well, remember there's that thing you can do in iOS that solves that problem. Oh, that's right. You know, so it just sort of happens all the time. You know, you're just continually reminding people like you can set the white point so that the, it can be even darker in the nighttime. If you want, you know, right. you can set the brightness on the flashlight. You can, you know, whatever it is, you can always, you know, make that adjustment or do that thing or what, you know, 
that like that stuff is always just sort of a constant reminder of like oh yeah that's a thing that i can enable and then everything you know everything else is better after that or whatever so that's right sometimes it just seems like a you know it just seems like a reminder uh you know it's always good so absolutely all right uh we got the, gave you some great tips and let's uh, let's just go ahead and wrap things up for this week uh that's a wrap for this week please send your comments questions and suggestions to our email address feedback at in touch with ios.com you can follow us on twitter at in touch with ios we are live streaming the show usually on thursday nights on at 7 p.m central 8 p.m eastern 5 p.m pacific on our youtube channel which is youtube.com slash dave g 65 uh, we can also watch past streams and listen to all the episodes visit i uh, in touch with ios magazine on flipboard where we have many of the topics and uh, questions and uh, stories that we talk about each week so check that out with links in the show notes you can subscribe in our in your favorite podcatcher also which would be of course apple podcasts or many others but better yet go to our website in touch with ios.com where all the links to all the ways to listen to us are there i am dave ginsburg and you can find me on twitter at dave g65 Thanks, Kelly, as always. Always enjoy having you on the show. Where can people find you? Wow. Um, well, you can find me uh, five days a week hosting the Daily Observations podcast over at MacObserver.com. You can find me on the Incomparable Network, where I pop up on some other episodes of things talking about different stuff. Uh, just recently, we did an episode about Only Murders in the Building, which was a show I very much enjoyed. Uh, I talked a bunch about Ted Lasso on the Football is Life podcast over there. Love I have it. my own show there called I Want My MCU TV, where we talk about the latest Disney Plus show, um, the latest Marvel show that is streaming on Disney Plus, I should say. Um, and you can hear me on an upcoming episode of Automators with David Sparks and Rosemary Orchard. Nice. And uh, you can find me the rest of the time on Twitter where I am Borso. Yes, I'm going through Ted West lasso withdrawal, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> we have a whole other year to wait until the next the third season comes. So You we'll... can rewatch with the podcast oh, where I... we were watching right. live. Like, yeah, there, I'm sure that. there will be a rewatch before season three starts. We'll do, I'm sure we'll do season two again anyway. Uh, we did a season one rewatch in the run up to season two. Yep. And then season two got sort of instant episodes. Like uh, the show came out on Friday and we would record something on Saturday that got released later on Saturday. And then, uh, so I'm sure there will be another round of, of uh, uh -huh. nerds nerding out about Ted Lasso. I'll, I'll, <laughs> uh, I'll be listening. That's for sure. And I hope, and I hope you enjoy listening to the show this week. We had a lot of fun doing it and uh, lots of stuff to talk about and i um, glad you were here. And uh, for that, uh, we appreciate you listening and we'll talk again soon.